Hey y'all, it's your girl Corporate Carolyn and the Corporate Workday is well over and I actually brought props. Um, can you guess what I'm going to talk about today? Well, I am back with some more ideas that I had related to the video that I recently did about how 50 is the new 35. If you take care of yourself and I gave 10 what I think are great tips to help you guys take care of yourself so that you can look as young as you can for as long as you can. Some people may call it vanity, but I just call it taking care of what God has given you to the best of your ability and that it lasts and looks as good as it can for as long as it can. So you saw the props on the chair that um, I wanted to share with you. Um, and I completely messed up and sat on them because I'm so used to sitting after seeing all of that. But what I wanted to say is I came up with a list of um, 10 more ways how you can take care of yourself. And I think one of those things kind of tied in. Um, I brought down some of the fun clothes that I found and number seven on my list, or actually number six was, um, don't think all clothes have to be expensive, buy some fun clothes. Cause some ladies that I meet, um, you know, they wanna buy Burberry and all of these things that are so expensive and they wind up going to stores like Bloomingdale's and Saks and they're just so excited to be spending money because they have money. I really don't care how much money I have. I would probably still always pop into Ross, TJ Maxx, Marshalls, um, especially Saks Fifth off Fifth. I would just pop in to see what I could find because you can always find something that's fun and relatively inexpensive. Like this is one of my favorite jackets ever. And during Christmas and Valentine's Day, I have this wonderful like pencil skirt that's made of almost like a velour um, type material that, you know, that fits very tightly. And then throw on a turtleneck underneath it. I think I put on a red turtleneck with this and some tall black boots and tights. Oh my goodness, I love this. I think I found it um, at Ross. And um, it couldn't have been any more than like maybe 20, um, definitely not more than $30. And the thing that I found at um, Marshall, uh, Rachel, is it Zoe? Um, a pink jacket, I don't know if the camera is doing it justice, but um, I found this just hanging up somewhere when I was walking through very quickly. And then I had bought um, these skirts um, I think I have more than one, maybe two actually. And you know, throw on a turtleneck and some tights, combat boots, and put on my little jacket with it. And it's just the cutest little outfit. It's stuff that you're wearing that younger women might wear. But if you do it tastefully, you're able to get away with it and you look a lot more youthful. Um, another thing, I found this in um, Ross. I think last year it was $16.99, but I can wear this like during Christmas, during um, all of the, the little um, furry things I've gotten on my nose, but um, you can wear these with um, with jeans, with um, on top of a dress that's fitted or whatever, and um, it just adds a little youthful flair to things that middle-aged ladies might often wear. Same thing with the jacket. I found this at Ross too. I mean, whose idea was it to put this wonderful faux fur collar on here? And it's just a regular jean jacket, but man, I was wearing that in Martha's Vineyard um, this year and last year. Nobody would have known that it came from an inexpensive store like Ross. So definitely, even though I said number six, don't think that all of your clothes have to be expensive. You definitely need some fun clothes if 50 is going to be the new 35 because you just can't wear all of your you know 50 year old lady clothes all the time mm. and even if you wear them some of the time just add some of the youthful pieces to it so okay so that's number one although it was really number six and then but what I really had for number one which is now number two um stretch 
to keep your ligaments and tendons from um, from shortening. Um, from what I understand, and I am certainly not a doctor, but um, in all of the reading that I've done of magazines over the years, um, it talks about your ligaments um, shortening over the years. Every year past 35, they get a little shorter. And I don't know if you've noticed, but it's more of a struggle for you to touch your toes if you're not constantly um, stretching. And I don't mean, you know, like bend down and touch them and like force the issue and like where you're bouncing or whatever. I just mean on a regular basis, like whether you're lying in bed and you, you know, put your legs up and um, bend your feet and like you're just touching them with your, um, with your toes, just so that you can feel that stretch along the back of your leg. Um, not forcing, not pressing, but just continuously um, stretching out those muscles, ligaments, tendons, um, just to make sure that you don't lose your flexibility because that's another way that you look older because um, the way that you're walking, um, you're starting to get stiffer, you're not as loose, you try to bend over to get something, you're bending to the side instead of bending straight down. Those things do date you, they age you, and then over time, your um, muscles and joints aren't aging as well as they could, and then next thing you know, you're like 60, and in order to even get up, you're having to um, hold on to something, press down on something and so you don't want that you want to constantly um, be improving and building up your joints tendons ligaments muscles and one of the best ways I find to do that is to go out on YouTube you go out on YouTube looking for clothes fashion um, you know hair things like that gossip um, look up flexibility stretching um, they have a wonderful um, host of physical therapists um, yoga people, Pilates instructors. In fact, um, I do move um, with Nicole. Um, she does Pilates. I think she also does yoga too. And so I noticed that um, she's helped to improve my flexibility as well as to help build up my knees and things and glutes um, because I found out that that's a part of the success of rehabilitating my knee that I had surgery on last year. All right, so that was number one or really number two. So number three, and some of these are competing for number one. This one is um, you need to stand up straight and you need to suck in your gut. You know, like if your little tummy is trying to poke out, like they used to say in the military years ago, you know, you suck that in um, and that helps your spine to straighten. You want everything to be in line. You want to have the best posture that you can have. That helps you to look more youthful as well. Um, slouching, um, it's not good for um, your internal organs, but it's also not good for your spine. And um, it's not good for your confidence as well as um, just how you look in your clothes. You look a lot better, you look slimmer, and you look a lot more youthful. And then and um, youthful hairstyles too. Um, it's very subjective, but um, a lot of times as you get closer to 40, you'll have people in your ear saying, oh, you should cut your hair. You know, you would look better if you just cut your hair. Um, very few people other than Halle Berry, Tony Braxton, um, or I forget what her name is. But she's this cute little Bob. Um, she's a talk show. She's a news reporter, and I can't think of her name right now. Um, the Tam Fam. I know she says the Tam Fam, but I can't remember what her first name is. Um, but anyway, um, she's a, she has a cute little head. Um, she's over 40, and she has a cute little hairstyle. Aside from her, not very many people can rock that look. And what usually happens when people convince you to cut your hair shorter than what it might be is like all of the angles of your face, things that might have looked... Um, harsh and were softened by hair, all of a sudden that stuff is like front and center. And a lot of the women who've been convinced to cut their hair very short, they wind up looking a little bit older. Sometimes it backfires on you. So make sure before you cut all your hair off that um, you do have a face that can pull that off and that it might not make you look more angular um, or 
like your face look a little harsher than it might have looked where hair softened the effect of it. And then also um, some of the societal norms that say, you know, you're 40, go ahead and go gray. And um, gray is a choice. I mean, if you want to be gray, by all means be gray. But if you're trying to, you know, kind of fool somebody like you're 35, gray is a telltale sign. And I know some people will argue me down with that and, and want to get really, really mad, but I'm not here to argue with you. I'm just um, sharing what my experience is and giving my opinion, which everybody's entitled to do, and you're in, entitled to have a different one. But I remember I was traveling with a relative and she is about the same age as I am. She decided to fully embrace the gray. She went with it. I've been fighting it and I've been dying my hair. We were together um, in a in a taxi or an Uber, and then um, I mentioned to the guy that I was in my 50s, and he says, what? You know, I had no idea. You don't look 50. And then that relative said, um, well, I'm in my 50s too, and he says, I know you were um, because your hair gives it away, but her, I didn't know. And then someone asked me um, in a store if that relative was my mother. And I said, no, she's not my mother. You know, she's just letting her true hair color show. I mean, so with all variables being the same, if two people look about the same age, a lot of times the gray hair will make people assume that you're your real age or maybe even sometimes older than what you really are just because of a hair color so you have a decision do you really want to be gray is that for you or would you like to continue dying for a few more years if you're trying to fool people because I didn't have the full um, experience of being a teen and like young in my 20s where I thought I really really looked good a lot of people had that time I didn't have that full time like I wanted it so I'm kind of um, I'm sowing some more of my wild oats as I'm older by fooling people and so having you know the dark colored hair and not embracing the gray has allowed me to fool people a little bit longer. So I'm enjoying that. Now, if you would like to enjoy that, by all means, do that. You can get a few more years out of how you're looking if people think that you're younger because your hair is not fully gray. So anyway, another thing about your hairstyles, um, it would be good if you can wear things that protect your edges. If your hairline goes back to here, a lot of times that says that a person is older or they're not really caring for um, their edges. And then another thing too for women of different um, cultures as well as people brown like me, um, if your hair, like say if you're blow drying it a lot, um, you know, the ends are very thin and kind of straggly, um, you definitely might want to go visit a stylist, get you a nice bob or something um, because it looks more youthful if your ends are not looking really raggedy or whatever. You know, they could be uneven, but um, there's a news reporter that I was watching um, and she was, you know, giving her... Um, her report, I know the first thing that I noticed was her hair, and she is a lady who's um, you know middle aged or older. Um, the ends looked really really thin, and you could like see through them. And so I was really glad when she got those cut because it did you know make her look a little more youthful, like she cared about her appearance. So um, definitely make sure that your hairstyle is matching the look that you want um, to reflect. Um, check out some style magazines or fashion magazines if you want to see what some of the latest stint trends and styles are that you might want to emulate. But um, a bad hairdo can definitely age you as well. And then um, number five, you want a fresh scent. The thing that I notice and that I appreciate about younger women is that they tend to smell good. Like if they're not using a body wash, they're using like some of those bath bombs and things, so things like that give me a headache. But um, but otherwise, like you could have a perfume that you like. And I like Dolce Gabbana's The One. I'm not really big on a bunch of different perfumes, but this is my favorite. And um, I like the way I smell. My husband likes the way that I smell. And it's a nice light, you know, simple scent. But um, also bath and body washes. Like I like 
oil of Olay's, or it may just be Olay now, um, where they have the ones that um, help to smooth their skin and they claim they're anti-aging with hyaluronic acid and some might have retinol or different things in there to make your skin um, look better as it's aging. So I highly recommend that. And um, definitely you want to smell good. And because as we're aging, they may, there may be ailments, you know, such as like your knee, your ankle, your hip or whatever, you know, might hurt. And some people are tempted to use things like Bengay or, or um, Voltaren, things like that, that might have a little smell to them. Maybe if you could get away with using those at night, not while you're out and about, you know, wearing your cute, fun clothes, trying to look good. Um, smelling like Ben Gay will give it away. So maybe you might not want to do that. And then also, it's so funny that a lot of times we gravitate towards those things when we have aches and pains. And you know what I noticed? Dealing with physical therapists as well as um, doctors like podiatrists or an orthopedic specialist, they never seem to recommend those things when you have aches and pains. If they recommend something, it's usually um, like an Advil or um, a diclofenac, something you know to get rid of the inflammation. Um, they don't usually recommend topical things that make you smell like your grandmother. So that might be an option during the day. And then by all means, if you need your Bengay or something that's kind of smelly, maybe do that at night so that you can um, you know, wash it off in the morning and go out pretending to be the younger version of yourself. And then number six, touch up your nails and toes. You look a lot better if, um, especially if your toes and nails match, um, but find something that's easy to maintain so you're not constantly having to get nail polish remover and take things off, because ain't nobody got time for that. So what I do is I use um, Essie's um, set in stone. They have this in a gold version as well um, because like regular polish you can't just keep you know covering it because um, you'll see the chips but the set in stone it allows you to um, just keep polishing over it and I'm able to even you know get my fingernails sometime and knock it off um, you know or just like peel it back in order for me just to paint over it again because right now I'm all about doing things pretty quickly. And so then also, um, speaking of the fun clothes from earlier, I would like you to be careful with shapewear because like a lot of people, you know, wear the um, like girdles or um, like, what do you call them, corsets that um, fit really tightly. And while they might give you a smaller waist, um, seemingly in the center, a lot of them push the fat up. Where's the fat gonna go? The fat has to go somewhere. And when I've tried wearing those things, fat comes up and spills um, over the top a lot of times. And when you're like doing this, you might see lumps of fat there. So sometimes it just might be better to go ahead and find something that fits well, that skims over your lumps and your bumps and not try to make things so tight where um, like they can maybe look at your t-shirt and see um, like the different um, loops or hooks in the front where it's obvious that you're wearing, you know, shapewear to try to cover stuff up. Um, or like when someone hugs you, and Wendy Williams used to get on my nerves with this, she would say that she would hug people to see if they were wearing Spanx, because some people would admit to wearing like maybe two pairs of Spanx um, if they were going on television or something. I didn't think that was very nice, um, but it is true. You can feel some of that shape where when people hug you. So you might want to think about, um, you know, just trying to go with the natural look. Um, you know, work on losing weight if you need to. But if you don't, you know, just find things that um, are loose enough where they fit you, but they're not so restrictive where they're creating extra lumps or whatever. You know, love the shape you're in. Keep working on whatever imperfections you need to deal with or address. But um, the shapewear, 
Um, if you're going to go that route, make sure you look in the mirror from all angles. Look at what's happening here. Look at what's happening back there because you don't want a bunch of fat to go up on your shoulder blades. Um, you definitely want to be careful with all of those things. But one thing that I love um, as the fall months are here, I like a pair of the Spanx tights, the ones where um, the body or the top of it comes near the bottom of your bra strap. Does it make you look a size smaller? No, it doesn't. All it does is just skim the lumps and bumps, make you feel nice and warm, uh, make your legs look good in combat boots. Um, but other than that, um, I would say I'm not a fan of shapewear. So um, be careful with that. And then another thing I would like you um, for number eight, make a few young friends um, and keep a youthful mindset. It's one thing to be around older women. Even I realize now that I'm 58, a lot of times, um, you know, I'm thinking of the worst case scenario for situations. Um, I'm a germaphobe, you know, I don't want to walk barefoot. Um, but it's funny when you meet a younger woman, you're talking to her, you're laughing, you're sharing the benefit of your wisdom and experience, but you also get to see their carefree, lighthearted, um, positive outlook um, that young women tend to have. Although some young women these days seem kind of hopeless when it talks, when it comes to deal with um, like love and the future and stuff like that. So hopefully, maybe we're even sharing some positivity for them, but it helps you to get a new, fresh perspective and maybe they can give you some fashion advice, definitely even career advice because I help to revive my career and um, go full force into the, into the direction of technical writing because of a 35 year old that I happen to be working with. So it's definitely good to have at least one or two younger friends. And then um, number nine, travel and read so you don't get stuck in ruts. It's very easy um, as you're like over 40 to get stuck in ruts. So see something new, um, get some good books, like look on Amazon, see different things you might be interested in. Like um, during COVID, I became really interested in places like Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard. And I started reading books that had series on those things. And so it just kind of opened up doors for me to travel and say, oh, I want to go here. I want to go there. I want to see this. I want to see that. And so reading really takes you beyond what your everyday experience might. And it helps you to get outside of your box. And you definitely want to do that. And then finally, um, this is one of the biggest things that I do um, to help me. I pray so the stresses of everyday life don't weigh me down. And I encourage you to do the same thing. And um, like you ask for help with situations that are too great for you. Because I tell you, worrying does not um, help one thing. I mean, you cannot add one cubit to your stature by sitting around worrying. Well, what if this and what if that? And if this happens and that happens, you know, what am I going to do? You can't control any of that. So what I do, I pray. And I take my butt to bed. And as you can probably tell, I'm starting to get a little tired because I've been up since 4.50. But um, anything that's too great for me, I take it to the Lord in prayer. I ask for help. And that helps me to wake up the next day renewed and restored and ready to, um, to fight again. Because um, the world is so complicated and just so much is going on that you definitely need to turn things over. To someone that can actually um, fix something because you can't all you can do is just keep up keep getting up every day and fighting and moving forward and prayer helps me to do that and hopefully it's helped to keep some of the worry lines off of my face and forehead but anyway guys hopefully those 10 items um, will help you take care of yourself so that your 50 can be the new um, 35. I don't know what my 58 is. Maybe it's 40. That was my Halloween costume. I tried to um, play a 40 year old woman. Hopefully I'm pulling that off at least. Um, that's still 18 years younger than what I am. So glory be to God if I am pulling that off at any point in my life by any stretch of the imagination. But hopefully this helps 
um, you guys can let me know if you have any other questions or if there's anything else I can share on. But until then, I'm going to take my butt to bed. Hope you guys have, oh, excuse me, a good evening. And I look forward to talking to you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.